Hi, this is Sarah Mikesell with The Pig Site, and today we are online with Peter Longendike. He's a senior research scientist with Trow Nutrition, and Peter has worked there for seven years focusing on sow R&D, looking specifically at how nutrition can improve sow performance. And prior to work with Trow Nutrition, uh, he conducted sow research in Australia at a public R&D institute. So thanks for being with us today, Peter. Hello, Sarah. Thanks for having me. It's nice to be with you today. Very good. Um, let's talk today a little bit about uh, stillborn piglets. Can you give us kind of a global picture of perinatal mortality? Um, if, you, if you look around the world, um, the numbers will vary, but I think uh, on average, we're good to say that um, uh, from uh, a litter born, we are losing around 20 to 25 percent um, of the piglets. Um, that's talking from birth to uh, up to the point of weaning. Um, most of that is uh, perinatal mortality. So that I'm talking those piglets that are that die uh, during the farrowing process. That will probably be around seven, eight percent. And then after that, we uh, we lose another uh, say 10 to 20 percent. Uh, mostly in the first week of life. So okay. altogether, that, that sums up to say 20, 25% mortality. Very good. And um, what can producers really do to kind of, you know, boost those statistics or improve those statistics on their farm? Um, yeah, this is obviously a challenging period in terms of managing uh, the sow. And uh, there's a number of things we can do uh, in terms of general management, but uh, also uh, specifically nutrition. Um, and we call this period the transition period. And it's interesting to see actually that despite that there are a number of things we can do, um, that there's not many people that have a transition concept in place. Um, there are uh, things called uh, uh, transition diets but I would say that there's not more than 10% um, of producers that actually use uh, transition diets for sows. Um, so there's a big gap there. And I think uh, opportunity that we can, uh, uh, can use to improve those numbers. Uh, I'll just give you some examples. Um, so a typical transition diet would have um, a high fiber content, uh, much higher than in a typical lactation diet. Um, which is interesting because when we move sows from the gestation unit to the lactation unit, we switch them from a gestation diet high in fiber to a lactation diet, which is um, typically low in fiber. And that's something we shouldn't be doing um, because we know that the um, fiber helps the sow to, um, to prevent constipation, for example. Right. Uh, fiber also supports um, gut transit, so transit of the feed through the gut and uh, a, a compromised transit of feed through the gut can result in um, uh, endotoxemia, uh, which in turn can result in um, problems with milk production, memory edema. Um, so those are all things that we can alleviate with uh, fiber in the diet. Um, so another aspect that we can uh, tackle with transition diets or transition management is uh, calcium uh, the calcium balance in sows. Um, we know that um, when sows go into the farrowing process, calcium levels in the blood tend to drop. And this is because colostrum production and uterine contractions are asking for calcium. Um, so when sows are unable to, to manage this drop in calcium, um, the farrowing process will be prolonged and uh, that will result in more uh, pigments being stillborn. Um, we know from the dairy industry that you can manage calcium levels in, in cows in their case um, by uh, playing with calcium levels in the diet and also by um, reducing the electrolyte balance in the diet. Um, those are concepts that haven't been applied in sound nutrition very much. Right. And I think we really need to, um, to spend time on researching uh, those kinds of concepts and see how they can be applied in sound nutrition uh, as well. Very good. And early on, you said that only about maybe 10% of people are, or producers are, are using a transition diet. What's the real barrier to use? Is it just labor and more work or what? why aren't people using this? 
I think it would be mainly the investment in um, additional equipment. Um, you would be needing, you may need an extra feed line uh, to go through your barn, uh, right. and you would probably need an extra silo to, to store the transition diet, yes. Very good. I was just curious because it seems like it's, uh, it's an important step as we keep working on, you know, uh, piglet, piglet mortality, but also sow health in general, right? Exactly, yes, yeah. I think we can gain a lot um, when we focus more on this transition period. Um, there's a lot to gain um, because we're not only winning piglets, uh, but we're also winning uh, vitality, I think. By improving this transition period, um, we, we win born alive, piglets that are born alive, but we also um, uh, gain quality of the piglets at weaning. So we're dealing with a better pig by the time they're weaned. Very good. Well, yeah. thank you so much for all the information today, Peter. Thanks for having me, Sarah. This is Sarah Meixel with the Pig Site.